the casting itself. Pretty pretty neat. Pretty proud of this one. I said I was proud of the last one, but this is pretty sweet as cast, and it is dead flat, and as far as I can tell, not that I've really looked, um, kind of dimensionally accurate. If you haven't been here before, um, I'm right in the middle of casting, then heat treating, machining, and hopefully getting running a um, V4 two-stroke Grand Prix motor. Um, using these bad boys, YZ85 cylinders, so gives me the option of 85cc's or these big bore 112cc cylinders, so yeah, I'll figure that out, but I need another three of these, so, you know, like the video, it helps out, and if you're feeling really kind, um, buy them on AliExpress, send them to me, the more the merrier. Um, all jokes aside though, yeah, I'll buy genuine Yamaha for the uh, once the prototype's up and running, obviously, it's way less hassle to get it all up and running with these, because like a hundred dollars each. But we'll take a closer look at this after we look at some of the um, prep I needed to do to the polystyrene to get it to this state. The last major casting that needs to be done is the rear crankcase half, which is, you know, about twice the size of this one. So this is just plaster, um, it's Jib 4 Plus. It's been mixed with some water. Um, as you can see, it's still pretty stiff. I might water it down a bit more. And then I'm going to use this paintbrush uh, to apply it to my pattern and apply it to the pattern here. So it looks like this one. So this was blue. Um, now it's fully coated. You can see it looks white. So yeah, this is just Jib 4 Plus. It's a uh, non-setting or um, drywall plaster. Water it down and then I put a little dab of surfactant or detergent in there to just break up the surface tension as I believe what it does. So the consistency you're looking for is that it's just going to run off the brush barely is uh, what I understand. So I've got the consistency right, I've got my pattern uh, it's all been sanded smooth with sandpaper this time, so it should give better, um, it should be a better surface finish. And essentially, I'm just trying to get a nice even coat over the whole pattern. Now, the purpose of this plaster is twofold it's meant to A, um, improve the surface finish so the sand isn't in direct contact with the pattern, and B, create a layer seeing as it's permeable so the gas escapes through the refractory but it slows it down a bit so we keep some pressure in that mold so as the aluminium evaporates it doesn't evaporate too fast leaving nothing but air in the mold and then the weight of the sand will collapse it if there isn't enough time for the aluminium to get in there essentially that's what this coating does it um yeah helps with the the pouring see on here all this yellow stuff that's um fiberglass filleting wax or it's essentially it's just a really low temperature um wax so you can just about melt it with your fingertips and you just smooth it you want to use it sparingly because obviously polystyrene it uses not very much energy to burn it um so it takes very little out of the aluminium but the uh density or the energy requirement to melt the wax is a lot higher so if you use too much wax what will happen is uh, the pattern or the aluminium will probably freeze in the in the mold and you'll end up with an, a bad pour essentially with some defects so you want to make sure that you're, you're using the wax sparingly
Sadly, there is no footage from the foundry. All I can tell you is the pouring basin worked a treat. Um, when I poured it, the pouring basin did sink quite low and I was worried the mold had collapsed and I had to wait an agonizing 20 to 30 minutes before we tipped it out. But this is how it came out and then it had a quick vapor blast to remove all the plaster and I was out of there all up from getting to the foundry setting up and pouring it probably only took a couple hours but I decided to hang around and have some beers um, and they are more than happy for me to come back to cast the rest of the motor so as we get closer um, you can see all the part lines these aren't really that relevant because well they're all going to be um, machined off I mean there's two mils of stock to leave on all these faces um, yeah so I'll start off with this area now it looks all right looks a bit lumpy now I'll tell you why that is it's because if you remember looking at the pattern I glued this in after the fact it was just some lumps of foam and then I used candle wax um, which was terrible terrible idea and then I couldn't get it off afterwards so I just rolled with it don't use candle wax I got some low um, low temp melting fiberglass filleting wax um, and that seemed to work perfectly so what I did next was I glued these on these were after the fact too because what happened was this took a solid week to manufacture like I did this in you know six individual pieces of foam all flipped once so that's 12 setups with tool changes on every side and that's manual tool changes um, and I, yeah it just wasn't fun it took a whole week and I didn't want to muck it up but we got enough material to clean this up and use it so that's cool like the center section came out all good I mean that was you know as machined came out pretty good I mean the transfer ducts for the uh, transfer ports they came out pretty good the reeds go in here I mean it's pretty smooth I think what I'm going to do with all these part lines is get a die grinder and just smooth them off so I don't have any sort of stress rises to avoid cracking. But if we look on the end here, we've got these little bosses. Um, they were going to be for the uh, for some mounts for an engine mount that was going to go between the two of them like a banana shape, and these were going to be recoiled. Now, dumb idea. Um, because this is so thick, I'm actually just going to cut these flush on the mill and then uh, drill a 15mm deep hole in here and put a recoil in and then I'll just make this bush or boss, however you want to um, I'll make that part of the laser cut steel um, bracket make it way easier but yeah, as you can see, the uh, surface finish here came up pretty good all these tunnels are going to be bored and this polystyrene or oh, it's aluminium it looks like polystyrene um, these will be cut off after the um, heat treatment to stop buckling because this here is very flat like if I put a straight edge across it um, you can't see light the whole thing is very accurate to the pattern um, there's a good look at the uh, finish there so obviously I probably could have done more to prep my foam so look at that it's a bit of a J that would have just been me like nicking the foam with something um, so it's quite delicate prior to coating it but it's all sort of superficial obviously I want to take um, take pride in my work but um, I didn't want to get too invested because I didn't think this was going to work as well as it did but now that I know it worked so well I might um, cast a replacement later on down the track so if you um, have any idea what this cost me um, yeah chuck in the comments what do you think this is worth how much do you think I should have paid for this the casting not the pattern making pattern making is usually where you spend all your money but yeah what do you think this is worth in material um, let me know in the comments but here's another couple of nasties so these were glued in after the fact just little discs because um, I realized the lip seals were a couple mils larger 
So I had to add two extra millimeters of width. So when I machine through, hopefully it cleans up along those edges. Um, but end of the day, it's just for a lip seal, a bit of extra support. Um, doing it again, obviously I'd do this all in one piece. Uh, my friend or a friend of mine doing a um, CNC router fix up for it. Oh, CNC router needs fixing and I'm doing it. So I'm going to have the CNC router here testing it once it's fixed. I'm just rewiring really. But it means I can do this whole thing in two setups. Flip. Do all six. You know, only have to do each tool change once. Flip. Do all six of the other side. And then I've got a pattern that's like one night versus this here, which is one week. So for the rear crankcase half, I'm not doing that on the milling machine. I mean, yeah, as good as it is, um, it takes an awful long time on there. I mean, it is sort of rigid and has slow rapids and a slow spindle. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll look at making another one on the router. But if you have any questions, you know, feel free, sing out. Don't ask me for my designs because I'm not going to give them to you. But yeah, any other questions? You need any help with anything?